Hello everyone. Welcome to Pella Venture, a program where you will experience entrepreneurship. Thank you for joining yet another session of Pella Venture. Today we're going to talk a little bit more on our session three, more about product uniqueness as you've been ideating and creating your product ideas with your team. How can you build it? How can you manage funds, the budgets? Some of those aspects as we get into the real meat of really building a product. But before we get there, let's talk about what we did in the last session. We talked about company name, logo, motto. We also talked about products, ideating on products and talking to potential customers early enough. So what did we talk about? When it came to team name or company name, logo and motto, we said it's an important part. Um, the guideline, just real quick to give you a recap was keep them simple, keep them catchy, be creative about it and find something that's really unique. We went through a number of examples on various popular companies, their logos, their quick motto, three to five words about the company, describing about the company as well as some unique and creative ways that they had created the uh, logo. The idea is not to spend a lot of time on it, but it's a critical aspect. And we also talked about it can be an art form, but it can be also using alphabets and numbers that you can create a name, a logo and a motto. A logo is something very concise, more artistic. Company name is a name, typically a word. Motto is three to five words, no more than that. That kind of describes what your company does at a very high level. So we spent some time on it and I hope you have discussed with your team and come up with different names and logos and motos. It's an important aspect. That's your identity. We also spent time in the last session talking about product ideas. And if you think, remember, we said, make a list of products that you want to build. And we talked about how to make that product something that brings the skills of all of the members of the teams together. And we also talked about how the product should be a combination of your interest, um, your skill, what you're capable of doing, and a need. There should be a need for that product in the market. Somebody should buy it. The intersection of those three circle is typically the ideal product. We talked quite a bit about how to ideate within your team using these uh, tenets or aspects. One, bring all of the team's skills together. Don't leave that alone. Second, make sure that you intersect between need, your skill and, uh, uh, you know, the interest that you have on what you want to build. And then respect each other's views and you create a list of products that you want to build. And we said how to capture that, giving a name of a product, having a description for it and some initial ideas on how many you want to build. But we didn't stop there. We also said as you do that as a first attempt, early on self engage and discuss with a few potential customers. Some of these customers could be your parents, your friends, your communities that you're in, or it could be others that you're targeting to go sell this product. Talk to them a little early about your ideas. When you talk to them, we gave some tips on how to engage in a conversation with a customer about a potential product. You explain the problem you're solving. You don't want to tell them fully about your product, but you tell the area or a problem that you're solving. You ask your potential customers for ideas on how to solve it. And then you explain your idea and the product at a high level. If a product solves their needs, you then ask them, will they actually pay for it? Because that's an important aspect. And as you engage in that discussion or a dialogue, you will also fine tune what you had initially kept as a list of product names and how many you want to build. And that's an example that's shown here where you either change the number of units that you want to build because there is more interest or you, you know, as an ad, the number of units that you want to build or you lower it because there is less interest. You also get some ideas where the potential customers may tell you what else you could build as a product and you may add that to your list. So this is where it helps to take your initial ideas itself and get some kind of customer feedback. That's a quick recap of our session two in terms of 
you know, the company name, logo, motto, product ideation, creating an initial list of products as a team, and then testing it out with potential customers, future customers, by sharing with them and engaging with them and having a discussion and dialogue. Okay, so with that, let's move on to this week's session. This week, we're going to talk about two aspects. One is about what is unique in your product and how you can talk more about that uniqueness to your customers as well as embed them in the products that you're building and then talk about your products and the company to your customers. Now, uniqueness is a very important aspect because that is one of those things that will market itself for someone to go buy your product. We'll talk a little bit about how to find what is unique. The first question that you want to ask is, in the list of ideas and products that you want to build, you want to ask this question, is your product unique? Unique means it's different. It means it's one of its kind. So discuss as a team, number one, why will anyone buy it? Why can't the customer buy it somewhere else? How is it different from another product or a similar product that may already exist? And what is special about what you're building? Is it the color, the material, the personalization? Is it the quality of the product? Is it the cost or something else? It may also be something that you're building or addressing for the first time that no one else has. That's also a unique thing. Now, as a team, take each one of your product and ask these questions. And then when you ask that question, you will come up with ideas on you know, answers for each of these questions that will help you identify your product uniqueness a product uniqueness is also called differentiation how it is different from any other product that's out there or how it's different from anything that's not even existing today right it's something unique about your product it can be better than a similar product for a specific reason maybe cost maybe quality maybe it's doing something else that that product doesn't do or it could be a new capability that never existed before. And the reason why you want to write this down is because this will help you a lot as you start to create brochures, as you talk to your customers when you start selling it. More importantly, doing this exercise early enough will help you to build your product with uniqueness if it didn't exist in the first place, right? As a team, when you discuss and you're not able to find something unique, then you want to ask the question, should we even build it? Or when you ask and discuss this with your team, what's unique? You may say, you know what, there's nothing unique, but maybe we should test it really well so the quality is really good. Or you may be able to say, let's add one additional aspect to our product so that it stands out unique. Don't know what that is, we didn't think of it, but now with this discussion, maybe we should add it. So it's important to think about product uniqueness. I'm going to show you, and, and, and here, there is another table where, you know, these are templates and tables and sheets that we will give you for you to capture it so that it's easy. Every product that you have, write at least two to three points on why it is unique or why should somebody buy it. And as you capture that, keep that handy because this is going to help you. One, to build the product to make sure you don't lose sight of it and you bring that in the product as you build it. Two, when you start to market and sell it. I'm giving you some examples of some past projects and some companies that were uh, done and what was unique about them. The first one, the company name was called uh, Cookie Tales and they created delicious stories. Their product was short stories that had tasteful ideas. So it was a book, a story, a novel, a fiction that had many uh, home made home recipes or home dishes or uh, dishes that were unique to a particular region and at the end of the uh, book uh, they had a glossary uh, which had uh, called out the recipes for the different dishes that came in the storyline so that's one so that was unique because if they somebody bought this book not only bought it for a novel or a fiction but they also got some free recipes out of it another company's name was Earthy Fashion uh, their motto was shine with earth they created you know natural materials they used the natural materials to build jewelry with clay and it was used for all uh, uh, you know ages and had a unique design so what was unique about this was it was different because it had 
some kind of a climate or an earth aspect to it in the jewelry uh, and the next one was money model this was money in a, in a local language meant home uh, they were building model homes and uh, they personalized that model home um, and they also delivered a garden garden compost bag for anyone who gave their plan they built a model of that home they personalized it with their names of the families and they also gave up compost bag with it uh, garden compost bag with it so again something unique hosa story was uh, art with uh, with passion and fashion uh, they had uh, uh, this was an uh, interesting uh, uh, company what they did was they took different themes and they did skits on it plays because they were you know very theatrically uh, skilled group of uh, uh, members in that company and in that they not only sold the, the the play but they also sold the costumes that were used in the play as part of uh, uh, their their designer jewelry uh, uh, you know portfolio of products and then the last one was bamboo padya there's this is where they had uh, they had a skill set of students who wrote poetry and they 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 actually built and wrote their poetry on natural bamboo and uh, these were you know thoughts and one liners and and poems given and in, in, inscribed in a bamboo uh, a backdrop and given and sold as a product as a craft item again some example of you know how they brought the skills together they are teams the individual uh, uh, you know capabilities uh, was there a need for it uh, there was an interest for it the intersection of it was where these products they also highlighted what was unique way before the building uh, started to do it and then started to highlight it as they start as they sold and met with the customers these are just examples to give you an idea how you can build products it's another set of products that were also there which um, you know students did with uh, a lot of electronics uh, they had a sensor uh, for the uh, for people with disability visually disabled which had uh, some kind of a beeper that would happen at the top of the stick with a sensor at the bottom for them to be able to find obstructions as they walk um, they had uh, another uh, science project which was more electronics driven where they um, built a product that they could put in the garden which had a motion sensor and as somebody got closer to that little craft item uh, the eyes would glow which had led in it um, they had built jewelries that actually had led lights on it and you could turn it on and off you could provide some themes on it for certain patterns of the glow so there were some interesting things done even on the uh, uh, non craft non uh, uh, a novel fiction on the science side of uh, uh, companies that were found this is to just give you an idea of um, one company name the logo the motto but also how to bring your skills your interest and the need for a product together to come up with product ideas and then making sure that you have something unique a differentiation that you can call on so with that what's next so the next big part in in this journey is starting to build the products so you you're already you know have your initial ideas you've hopefully talked with a few potential customers now go get creative be confident don't worry about will it sell uh, can i really build it you will always know that only once you start doing it so start building it and as you're doing it it's going to take you a few weeks maybe one or two months for you to build the product as you're doing it start talking about your company name uh the products that you're building what's your company uh, logo and motto start putting it out there for people to know don't wait for the end of the product to be uh, ready for you to share this during this phase of building the product start socializing and talking about your company to your friends families communities schools um, your teachers and others so that you can start to get a lot more excitement going and you're getting that word of mouth marketing going okay so with that um, i'm going to switch to the next topic in this session which is very important so we talked about a lot about products teams products how to build it what's unique now we're going to start planning so there is very it's an important aspect we need to make a plan a, a plan for um, how we are going to build this um, how to make a plan and it's all about who does what by when that's what all planning is about 
and how do you start tracking your budget the money that you have because you're going to get some initial money which is called capital and i'll explain a little bit more and how do you start tracking your capital how do you start buying your things that you need to build the product and then how do you keep track of it so let's go one at a time let's start with plan so anytime you start working on your different products for your company you need to have a project plan a project plan at the very uh, simplified view is who does what by when so there are three things right who what when and this is very important so think about the various activities and actions that you need to plan for break them down to as small an item as possible and then try to distribute that work item to all the members in your team uh, based on their interest and skill don't give all of the work to some and the others are just waiting and watching try to distribute it so that you have equal responsibility and a shared responsibility as you work a project plan should consider various activities at different stages of the company so for example you'll start with raw materials maybe you need to buy some things for you to start building and then you have to start building once you've bought it after you've built it you may have to test it to see if it works you may have to package it so that it is boxed and everything then you'll have to start introducing your products to the customers you may have to create flyers and pamphlets and maybe websites to start advertising it taking the sales order <laughs> somebody should continuously be tracking expenses and tallying all the finances so there are various activities depending on which stage you are in the project and you need a plan for all of them which means you need a project plan to know who's going to do, do what by when <laughs> and when you make the project plan one of the most important things is you have to be as specific as granular as possible so that you don't have any misconception or misunderstanding the more granular the plan the better control you have on the execution you have no surprises then you ask somebody to do something they understood it they come back with something else then you're all surprised but by then time is gone for you to go fix it you've lost time you'll have to redo it again so but at the beginning itself if you are very granular and i'll tell you what that means in a second um be as granular and as specific as possible if task owner the person who is going to do that work the the who um the task itself is the what or the date which is the by when if it changes update the plan because sometimes one activity may have a dependency on another you may have to buy raw materials but then you have to start building the product without the raw materials you may not if the raw material gets delayed your time to finish the product may also get delayed so if you had put on one date and that date you are not able to meet then the other dates will also change so we'll have to figure out how to make sure those dependencies work and have some way of knowing what you finished what's in progress or what is having a risk in the deadline for example you need to buy something the store is closed or you don't have an access to go do it during the week and you slip the date and it's at risk the market red let everybody know so that you can change it what i've highlighted here in yellow is you know purchasing raw materials right that raw material is just i've shown a simple example of the who does what by when and i've got three activities the name who's doing it john jim and jack john does frame the paintings by when by july 15th similarly packaging the paintings brochure for the paintings these are act three activities three deadlines green shows it's done yellow shows it's still in progress but we'll get done red shows we're going to miss the deadline that is a high risk so that you know ahead of time so you can plan some corrective action so this is you know the the principle of a plan or a project plan you can't just simply say uh john just do everything for paintings by july 20th john may not know what everything really means so you have to spell it out very clearly or he may have an interpretation and the rest of the team may have a different interpretation so then it becomes a problem so you got to be very clear and crisp so it's important to have a project plan so i just gave you the basics of what a project plan is and we'll give you sheets out for you to use that will help you in doing the project plan so what will a simple project plan look like and here is a is a link for you to instead of using a table of a who does what by when that's a simple way of doing it another way of doing it is called a gantt 
chart, a Gantt chart, and you can use some online Gantt chart. A Gantt chart will simply be able to also tie in addition to the different activities, it will tie one activity to another. For example, painting should be complete, only then you can frame the painting and package it. So you can tie the frame, the painting and packaging, uh, packaging to the frame, frame to the completion of the painting. So if one activity slips, the other will also slip. If it takes five days to frame the painting, then if the painting has to be done, let's say on October 10th, the frame, the painting can be done 15th October. If the painting is complete only on the 11th, then this will automatically move to the 16th because it needs five days. So a Gantt chart will help you do those if you need to use them online. But this also is, uh, is it's, you can do it simple. If, if your project plan is simple enough, not too many complexities, you can also use a simple table for it. Um, so again, needs to have clarity on, you know, who does it, how many you have to do. Frame the painting. You should be very clear. Frame five paintings, three, ten, you know, by then. Uh, being precise, avoid surprises, like I said. Uh, every task should have an owner. This brings accountability so that everyone's involved in doing it. If something doesn't happen, you can say, hey, you didn't do it. Please finish it. You won't have things like, hey, I thought someone will do it, but nobody did it. You don't want to be in that situation. You always want to assign it to one or more person. There can also be two people working on something, but you want it to be assigned so that they know they have to finish it. It's not like ownerless, right? You want to have an owner. Um, so here is a better way of also bringing more precision to the project plan. See, the previous example that I showed you was having the what slightly high level didn't have too many of the details. It said frame the painting. It never said how many. Look at this example. We're saying John buy, we didn't say buy oil paint. We said buy two bottles of one letter green and red oil paint by this date. And we said complete five paintings that needs to be done by Jim. Two by three, the size of it. What kind of painting? Nature scene. It's very precise. And the last one's a brochure. So you can see the difference, right? You can be very clear and precise so that if Jim doesn't is not able to do five and he's able to do only three, you know, to know how to adjust. You don't want to wait for a month and then Jim brings only three when you expect at five because you may not want to spend two more uh, a packaging material, for example, right? So things like that. So a project plan has to be very precise. You could use tables like this or you could use a Gantt chart that's available online. When you make the project plan, sit as a team and discuss because somebody can say, hey, this is not very clear. This is ambiguous. Or you may assign it to a person and the person will say, yeah, did I get it right? Is this what you want me to do? Make sure you have that confirmation. So there is no miscommunication or surprise. So that's what a, a project plan is all, all about. And, you know, most of the time, I'm just going to switch gears now. Most of the time, product ideas will be done. And when you start to want to build it, the first big question is, hey, what all do I need to buy? Because you can't just start building something. You need things to build what you want to do. Sometimes it could be craft related. Sometimes it could be engineering science projects where you may need some batteries and resistors and capacitors or maybe a board. Sometimes it could be a, a book. So you may need to figure out where do I go get my script done? Where do I print it? How do I print this? So there's various aspects to starting your product development. One of the first one is what supplies do I need for me to build? So creating a list of supplies is what I'm calling out here. It's sometimes called raw materials. Raw materials can be of various types. You know, if you're doing a craft work, it may be chart paper and color and paint. If you're doing something uh, with wood, it may be something else, the tools needed for it. If you're doing something with electronics, it could be something else. If you're writing software, it could be something else. The raw materials might be, I need a laptop. You know, I need storage. I need to learn a language. You know, so many things. So create a list of the raw materials or what do you need to build the product, right? Some of it could be physical items. Some of them could be soft items like a software or a PC or something. So these are things that you need to buy or have access to. Things could be things that you get without having to go to a shop to buy it may be available in your home already you may be able to borrow collect or use things out of recycle reusability and stuff and then uh, think of what do you need to really buy purchase pay money and buy it where do you buy it who will buy it 
and by when should it be bought so that you can start building. So do some homework on what raw materials you need, how much it will cost and how much do you need to buy. You have to be very careful in how much you need to buy. You don't want to buy in excess and then become a waste because that will affect your profit and loss. You don't want to buy too less and not be able to build. So it's a little tricky so you want to go careful maybe buy a little bit more or maybe buy in stages. If you want a lot of oil paint maybe you buy in three batches or two batches rather than buy it all once. <laughs> and then uh, the other important thing you also want to ask is what help do I need from somebody else? It could be some other adult, some other friends, family members that can help you with it. Either to buy or to train you. It may be a topic that you need to get trained on, right? That you may want to take their help. Yeah, I know how to do it, but can you help me? Is there a software that I can use to go do something online? Or can you help me give me a ride to go buy this? Or can you buy this for me and come back by this day? You might even ask help like that with the activity itself. Make sure that their time is available and allocated in your project plan because it's hard when you're asking for a help. So make sure that you're giving some buffer. But the most important thing is, as you start to build the product, what do you need to build the product? That's what this is all about, the supplies, okay? So here is an example of the project plan. Again, the who does what by when. And we kind of built, uh, partition this plan into three stages, right? There's a stage where you need to buy a lot of raw materials for you to start the project. Then you want to spend some time to build it. And as you can see, some of the build is uh, on assigned to one or more people. It's not always one person. Sometimes all of them sit and do it and you have clear deadlines. And then what do you need to do for selling? So in this case, is a, this seems like a, a product that involves a lot of craft work and artwork. So there's a lot of material to be bought, like papers and pens and things like that. And then there is, you know, work related to cutting and painting and things like that and it's a, it's a book take it to a shop and get it bound and then there is for the brochure you know take pictures create brochures and then have them ready as you can do it in a digital store or upload them to go do it just gives you an idea there is stages of project planning the the initial before building the product what all do i need to buy as i build what all activities do i need to do and what do I need to do for selling? Sometimes there could be an overlap. For example, one or two people in this team could start building the selling material towards while building is happening as well. That's okay, right? It doesn't have to be a serial activity. So this is just an example to show you uh, what all is there uh, in, a, in, an, uh, in an example of a project plan. Now, I did tell you about, you know, funds. When you're starting to buy things, you will need to use money. So it's, it's a very good idea to assign one member of your team to always track all the expenses and the financial aspects. You remember in the early part of our session, I talked to you about different roles in the company. One of them is a financial role, a chief financial officer or a finance person who tracks all the expenses. So you want to have that one person. You want to update the expense sheet for every expense that you make. It could be an online sheet and I'll show you the expense sheet in a, in a bit, um, how you capture them. Um, you wanna discuss with your team before you spend. It's very important because every spending that you do to buy something to build a product is an expense for you, right? Then you'll have to be careful about how much money you're using to build it because that will eventually have to be used in how you will price the product so that you can make the profit. You don't want to over buy something to build and then leave them wasted, right? Like I said before. And before you buy anything for you to build your product, ask the question, do I need to buy this? Or can I get it free of cost somewhere, right? Sometimes it could be things that's already available. But before you take it, make sure you ask if it can be really used uh, that's already available. Um, what will I do with what I'm buying? Ask that question. You know, will I fully use it or do I need only little? Sometimes you may need little, but the quantity that you get uh, might be more. You don't have a choice. Um, are we getting the right quantity? Can I get it for free uh, from, you know, recycled or reusable material that you may find find at home and things like that? 
save the bills and receipts for every item that you purchase for building the product. Now, the next big question is, where do I get the money to go build? So we'll talk about a company needs what's called as a capital, the initial money to start the company. Uh, there is different ways. In Pella Venture, we try to fund each team with a capital for them to go build. Sometimes that capital can come from small portions of money that you distribute within your company. So let's assume you need 1000 rupees to start your company. And if you have five people in your team, maybe each individual brings 200 rupees, right? And then you have a thousand rupees or maybe your, 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 your school or, 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 or uh, the place that you're learning this uh, program from, they may give you a capital for you to start. Or you may have to take a loan from your family or, or your well-wisher and then pay it back when you sell the product. But capital is your starting money that you need to get your company going. And that's when that's what you will use to buy your things. But before we go to capital, since I talked about expenses and tracking expenses, make sure this is an expense tracker form. You will get a page like this. It will be available online. You can use it either as a printed copy, as a hard copy, or it could be online as an Excel spreadsheet, which we will teach you how to update. It'll look very similar to this. Who's buying it? What are they buying? How many are they buying? What's the cost of one unit? So one unit means he's bu John's buying a notebook. He's buying three. Each notebook costs 10 rupees or $10, whatever you want to call it. A total amount is 30, right? 10 into three. So you want to capture your expenses and that's what expense tracker sheet is. The summation of all expenses and all items in the last column, that's what this is. In this case, you, we bought only one thing, but there may be others who bought a few other things and will add up. This becomes your total expense. You have to manage your expense within your company because these are not things that you're selling. These are things that you're buying to build your product and sell it, right? You're not gonna buy a notebook from a shop at 10 rupees and sell it at 11 rupees and say, I'm making a profit. That's not how companies work. You're gonna do something with this, right? So this is an expense tracker. Now you know what an expense tracker is. It's all the things that you're gonna purchase logged or written in this table, either in a hard copy or online. And this is how the table will look like. And you gotta be very clear about what you're buying, who's buying it, how many of that item you're buying, and what's the cost of one item and what's the total, right? And you keep track of all of this. And this is this is the this is the person that you assign. I talked about one person assigned for finance, and I told you when you buy everything, keep the bill and receipt. So every individual gives their bill and receipt to this one person and this person logs all the expenses, okay? So here is an example of multiple people buying it, right? So what all they bought, how much it costed. So as you can see, you know, Dhruv, Deepak, Jain and Nadeem bought a whole bunch of things, different quantities, unit price is different, total price is a multiplication of these two, and then this is the total expense that the finance person is maintaining. So 325 rupees is what has been spent to buy things to build your product. Now I told you, where do I get the 325, 325 rupees? It's from the capital that you get to run your company. So the capital is what I'm going to talk about here. So beginning of your company start, you will be getting the capital from one of the person who's giving you the capital. In this case, Jane is the one that's funding your company, 1000 rupees. Your starting capital was 1000 because you spent 300 rupees in your expenses. Your today available capital is only 675 rupees. So the summation of all capital received will get added. The capital minus the total expense will be the available capital, right? The total expense is in the total expense sheet on the previous page. This is your total expense. This is your starting capital. You'll add all your, all your capital. The available capital will be your, your total capital minus the expense. And all of this will be available to you in a sheet that we will give you. This is just an example of, uh, of, of what the sheet looks like. Now, again, this is a mistake. This shouldn't be a date of purchase. This should be date of capital provided. I'll fix this before I send it to you all. Okay. So that's an example of, hey, I started my company. I have a team. I have ideas done. I talked to potential customers. I wrote down what should be unique in my product. 
Now I'm going to start building it. When I start building it, I wrote a list of my raw materials needed. I'm going to buy them. Before I buy them, I get the capital for my money, for my company. That's how much money I can use. Using that money, I'm going to buy the things to build my product. Those are all becoming expenses and you track your expenses, right? And I taught you about that in, 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 a, in a full flow, starting from the beginning. And you saw different aspects of how much um, care you should put to what you want to buy, how much you want to buy, where you want to buy. We talked about the project plan, how to make that plan very clear. I talked about the roles in the, in the team, right? Everybody should do some work. There should be one person managing all the expenses and that's what this is all about. Okay, so, you know, we've captured, we've covered a lot in the last three sessions. I just want to give you a little bit of a words, did you know? I know this is easier done live, but I'll be doing it online. You know, there are different words that we talked about. Product, differentiation, inventory, advertising, cost, pricing, competition, accounts, capital. These were words that we used in the last three sessions. I want to quickly give you, did you know the meaning of it? And I'm sure, you know, I'll give you a few minutes for you to write down what each one of them mean. But, you know, capital is the money used to set up the business. Inventory is a number of products or number of things that you're going to build and keep so that you'll start selling. That's your inventory. And if you said, I want to build 10 paintings for me to sell, 10 is your inventory. When two gets sold, your inventory is eight because you have eight more remaining to sell. Uh, capital is the money that you've used to set up the business. Uh, the money used to build the product. I kept telling using the word expense. It's also called cost. Cost of building a product. So cost and expense is what you incur, right? It is the money you are spending to actually build the product. It's the money used to build your product. That's cost. Pricing is what the customers are going to pay to you as a company to buy the product from you. So you'll put a price tag for it. You know, you go to a store, you see a price tag. That's how much you're paying that shop for that product that you're buying, right? Pricing is different from cost. Cost is how much it took for the company to go build, put the, you know, make that product and put it out there. And if the pricing is more than cost, you make a profit. If the pricing is less than cost, you are at a loss. We'll talk about it later. Products are what you build. So when we keep saying product, it's what the companies are building to sell. Um, accounts, keep track of accounts, keep track of your finances. That's how you track your expenses and sales. Um, advertising is basically what telling what you're building and enticing people to buy your product. Differentiation, we talked about it today, is it's, it's, it's what's unique about your product. And competition, who's your competition? Is other companies or other products that are very similar and they're also building similar things and selling, that's competition. So a quick uh, word soup of various words that we've used in the last uh, three sessions, thought I'll do a recap. I think the one that's tricky is knowing about cost and expense, which means the same. Pricing is what people will pay to buy your product. Capital is very important. It's a new new concept. The initial money that you use to start your company. Um, the rest of it are things that we've done before. Okay. With that, I'm going to stop today's session. Next session, we'll talk a little bit more about advertising, pricing, and selling. But now is the time for you to have finished your product ideas checked with potential customers, fine-tuned it, have a reasonable understanding of what you want to build, how many you want to build, start making the project plan so that you can start building. Hopefully by now and the time we meet next, you have the capital. You're going to start spending that money as a cost or expense to build your product. Use a very good project plan, clearly who does what by when, with a lot of clarity, no ambiguity very clear project plan so that you start to build the products and then next time when you come we'll start talking about advertising pricing and selling which will be the final leg towards our Pella venture i hope you found the session useful till we meet next time bye